Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your retraction settings. So first off, let me explain what retraction is. When your printer moves from the end of an extrusion to a different island and starts extruding again, there's going to be some ooze between there, unless you add retractions. So retractions will take the filament and pull it back out. Whether it's a Bowden extruder or a direct drive extruder, it will pull the filament out, move it over, and then push it back through to the same point so then it can keep extruding. Now, contrary to popular belief, retraction doesn't suck the filament back up. It's not a straw. All it's doing is relieving the back pressure. So there will be some ooze, but there won't be a pressure buildup where it's trying to push more material out and oozing between those travels. So calibrating your retraction settings will just limit how much oozing you have between those two end and start points when it's extruding again. Now, how might you be able to tell that your retraction settings aren't good enough? Well, if you see sort of a web around your print, like either it can be really obvious, like something like this, or it can be something a bit less noticeable where it's just like a fine fiber around the outside of your print, almost like a cobweb. That would usually mean you need to fine tune your settings just a tiny bit more. If it's something bit major like this, that would mean you need a bit more calibration to get it there. Now the first step for calibrating retraction settings is to make sure that your E-steps are correct. And that just means when you tell your printer to move 100 millimeters through the extruder, it's 100 millimeters. It's not 101, it's not 99. And to actually calibrate that, we do have a separate article or video that you can watch on how to do that. But it's pretty simple. It's just extruding, measuring what came out of the either the Bowden tube or what went into the direct drive and comparing those numbers and readjusting as you need. Once you have your E-steps calibrated, you're going to need to download the retraction test models. And they're really simple. It's just four cubes spaced out in increments a little larger than the last. So the first two are really close together, then a little further and really far apart. That way you can really see the, the different retractions that go on within a print. So if you have a part like this, it may be a little less obvious that your retraction settings aren't good enough. Whereas if you have a large gap between two different parts, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious, and in some cases, a lot more obvious that your retraction settings aren't accurate. So first we're gonna calibrate the travel speed. And now this is what the worst case scenario looks like. It's zero retraction length and 40 millimeter per second travel speed which means that there is a very long window between moving from one cube to the other, and it is not doing any retraction. So there is a lot of oozing between the two. And by calibrating the travel speed, you're changing what that window is between one cube and the other. So the shorter that window, the less material that you're allowing to ooze. I find that 150 millimeters per second is a good starting point, and then calibrating from there. But then, of course, you're going to also need to calibrate your retraction length. Now with retraction length, that is something that is going to vary between printer and printer just because of how it actually works. So with direct drive printers, it's a little bit easier. One millimeter is a pretty good number to start with and you can add more retraction if it's too stringy and you can add less retraction if you're finding little gaps in the, in the print because of the retractions. But with Bowden printers, part of it does, part of it is determined by how long the Bowden tube is. So where a Bowden printer with a long tube may need eight millimeters of retraction, one with a much shorter tube could need only four millimeters. So you're not gonna find that there is one number that works on every Bowden printer or even direct drive printers, but there is a good range to follow. So for a Bowden printer, I would recommend starting at about three millimeters and working your way up until the first cube looks as good as the last cube. Now I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper into why retractions are so different on Bowden printers. It, on a 175 millimeter printer, the inner diameter of the Bowden tube is two millimeters. And on a three millimeter printer, the inner, inner diameter is four millimeters. And the, the reason that there's, there's such a variance is that that slight variance in the inner diameter, two millimeters is bigger than 175, does mean it extrudes easier and pushes through the tube easier, but you have slack. So as you extrude it, it's pushing along the outer radius of the curve of the Bowden tube, like on the Ultimaker. It's going around the outer curve, but as it's retracting, it has to pull all that slack and ride on the inner curve of that radius. 
So there's, there's slack in there that needs to be relieved, and that's why the retraction settings can get really high on a Bowden extruder. So while on a direct drive printer, any more than two millimeters, you're gonna start getting heat creep and clogs, that's why six millimeters sometimes works on a Bowden extruder. That's just part of the system. So here's some tips for success when you are calibrating your retraction settings. Make sure that you don't change more than one value at a time. So if you're changing the travel speed, then leave the retraction length alone until you see what happens with that new travel speed. Otherwise, once you start changing two at a time, you're not gonna know which one is actually solving the issue or which one is making it worse. On top of that, when you're changing these values, make sure to limit it to 0.25 or 0.5 millimeter differences on the length or maybe 25 millimeters per second on the travel speed. Any more than that, and you may see too big of a difference between the two, any less, and you may not see anything at all. As well, you may notice that on some materials, while the retraction settings works really well in PLA, they don't work at all for ABS. So you will need to do some calibrating from one material to another, but with most slicers, you can add in so that certain retraction settings are applied only for PLA and these are applied only for ABS. So just make sure to keep track of those things and keep it all organized so that all of your prints are successful. And that's it. Calibrating retraction settings is one of the easiest things you can do to enhance the quality of your 3D prints. Whether you're using an E3D V6, a Lulzbot TAS6 toolhead, an Ultimaker, a Zortrax, all of these have different retraction settings, but once you get them fine-tuned, your prints will come out a lot better. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and happy use free printing. Hey guys, I really wanted to share with you this awesome topographical map of California that Evan and Caitlin sent us. They used their Lulzbot TAS 6 to print this. We really like to see the different creative and technical ways that people are using their 3D printers. So if there's anything you want to share with the community, feel free to send it our way. See you next time.